we have uh, Stark County on, on the header here. There's a Stark County by school districts, or if, if that's the one you're looking at, Tom. Uh, or you I had City Village and Township. Yeah, that's fine. We can start there. City Village and Township. Uh, basically, what this is, is these are in market value. So just for clarification, uh, they're in market value. Um, we had a miscommunication early on. Someone thought it was taxable, and market's way up here. Taxable is 35%. So not to alarm anyone, these are in market value figures, and it stands, uh, basically shows you by each city, village, and township, uh, the total market value, this first column in 2011, so that would have been last year's total market value, uh, compared to our proposed 2012 market value for each of the two classes. So this line, what separates it is class one and class two. And basically the, uh, the state defines class one as all residential and agricultural property, and class two would be defined as anything else. So that would include your commercial, your industrial, your mineral properties would be in the class two uh, columns. It shows the value change total, the total value loss in this case, um, in parentheses there, and then the percentage, what that is as it's expressed as a percentage. So you can see at the very bottom in the county, um, and I know Alan has gone over this with you before as far as the projection for the for the general fund, but uh, for the county, if you add uh, the value change in class one and class two, we're roughly $1.8 billion of market value. There with some information that you can peruse at your leisure, just about the reappraisal, some of the frequently asked questions that we do get as an office, um, just so you can have that for reference in the future. But basically, a state law requires us to do this procedure every six years. It takes roughly two to two and a half years to complete, to view all the properties, to review them and to set a uh, pricing model that would match the market value for them. Uh, due to the economic downturn in 2007, 2008, and it's continued yet still today, uh, we saw a significant drop um, in residential uh, property values, especially single family residential property values. Um, and those values are reflected in some of the uh, handouts that are in your packet. Uh, with uh, They're broken out by city, village, township, um, on some of the sheets. They're also broken out by school district in case there's any of your constituents that are curious uh, how it affected each individual school district. And then there's a summary sheet on single family residential, which, comp which consists of, that consists of about 80% of all the properties we reappraise are single family residential, so that's largely our focus. Um, in doing so, and, and part of this process is that we, we physically review a property at a point in time. And as we all know, properties are subject to change over months and even years. And some of the properties that we reviewed early on in the process may have been subject to some of those changes, and thus we uh, open it up for informal review, which Alan spoke of before. Uh, basically, we're sending mailers and notices to every homeowner uh, in order for them to help us with this process, review their record, make sure it's accurate. Um, if they do have a question about their valuation, they can contact us before October 1st, and there's really three ways for them to contact us. They can go online. We have developed a simple web application, which I have screenshots of in the back, and I can go over it with you if you'd like, um, but a basic simple web application for them to apply to have their property reviewed. And we ask them some very simple questions, ask for uh, supportive information or documentation as to why they would want that change. There may be an error on the record. They may have recently purchased the property for less than what we have it on for proposed, um, and they want us to know about that. We want to review that as well. Uh, we also have a phone bank, as Alan mentioned before. Uh, there will be approximately uh, 10 to 12 uh, staff members available during the business hour day to take in applications for the informal review, and that's really what September is about. It's about us taking in uh, information from people so that we can review it in October and November. And then we have 22 different sites throughout the county throughout the month of uh, September uh, that, uh, that uh, the public can go to to discuss with an appraiser on site uh, the uh, information about their property or their valuation. So that's, that's uh, what we're looking for in the informal review is just feedback and information from the public to help us uh, complete the values. They are just proposed at this point. They are not finalized so that we can make adjustments based on information that they give us. So. I have a couple questions. Sure. Um, so, is my information live on the web right now? 
Your information is live on the web, but the new valuation is not live it's on not, the web. Okay. It, so. is, it is available for you to review by typing in your parcel number into the web application. Your okay. proposed value is there. Okay. Yes. And when uh, I, I just happened to go on yesterday looking for something, and I noticed a renewed pictometry. I mean, yes. So when was that actually taken? That was taken um, in the fall of 2011, late fall of 2011, and early spring of 2012. So there were two two okay. segments. And the so pictures have been up for about a, a, a approximately a month, month okay. at this yeah, point. Yeah, because the last time no. I looked, it was a different shot. Yes. Yeah. So then there was an argument at home as to when this picture was taken, and of course I won the argument. <laughs> yeah. So that's all I wanted to verify. <laughs> <laughs> and then my other question was, how far back are we going on sales? So if I bought my house in June of, because this is a real life act. Okay. Uh, June of 10, 2010. Yes. Will my sale price still Yes. Rate? Yes. We I want my value to stay the same. I don't want it to go down. Per the Department of Taxation, they look at the previous 3 years as oh, acceptable okay. period. Okay. All right. So that would be 9, 10, 11 up to the reappraisal in 12. So So it should stay that way for 3 years. Yes, it After should sale price. it should that stay that way through the cycle. So if it was set in 10 we're not going to change it for 12. We'll okay. look at it again in 2015. As I said, they, they compromise a, a large portion of, of what we deal with. And that is broken out um, basically by city, village, and township for single-family residential. Um, again, with each of the columns, the first column showing you the median appraised value for 2011. And all the median is is if we took them from high to low and ranked them, the median is the very middle point of those valuations. So the median appraised value uh, from 2011 is there, as well as the proposed median uh, appraised value for 2012 with the median value change um, that we're seeing, and then also the median percentage change for each city, village, and township. And largely, these are, these are derived, these new values are derived by looking at a period of sales. As, as Janet mentioned before, her property sold in 2010. Well, we look at those sales over a period of years and try to study to find a pattern as far as is it dropping? Is it increasing? Um, and this time we saw a significant pattern of, of de decreasing values over the, the last few years. So we make that adjustment in these values in 2012. Um, we've had quite a number of boards the last few years with people saying, oh, you're just too high on my property value. I couldn't sell it for that. The hope is with this adjustment that they would be able to reconsider that and say, well, I probably would want to be able to sell it for this amount that you have for 2012. So. That's and, our hope. And Jason, those yes. are really arm length sales. Yes, and only arm's arm length sales. Length. Right. Okay. The state prohibits us from using foreclosures or forced sales or a sales related to those, um, basically deeming those as not market sales. And by that I mean they're not knowledgeable buyers and sellers that are both willing, neither under any kind of stress to sell or buy, uh, and both come to an agreed upon price. That's what the, the state defines as an arm's length sale. They review our work. They have their own sale file that they review. They look at our files, and then we, uh, they basically approve what we do as far as the valuation adjustments. So we're not allowed to directly consider foreclosures. However, having said that, they have an impact on the market, as we all know. And where they're more prevalent, we saw larger drops in, uh, in, in the arm's length sales uh, that we saw in the area. So there's definitely a, a correlation there that we tried to take into consideration. But we're not allowed to directly use the prices on those sales to measure. And if in the end you believe one, one thing and DTE feels something else, they can... The DTE has the authority. Has the final say. Yes, they have the authority. Right. You don't. Yes. And there were some areas that we would, we would have liked to have gone a little bit lower, uh, but the DTE was not comfortable with that. And DTE is... The Department, the Department of, of Tax, Tax Equalization. <laughs> A division of the Department of Taxation. So. Uh, but that's what this, this sheet basically covers uh, the median percent change for single family residential. And then there's some parcel counts, which uh, I believe Kelly covered in her story in, in the repository uh, last Sunday. But just gives you a count of how many, uh, how many people saw decreases or increases or no change. Uh, so basically, you're looking at about at the at the bottom left hand corner or bottom right hand corner, 90% of the properties saw a decrease uh, 
for the reappraisal. Some of the increases would be due to new construction changes in the property um, that we've picked up as a result of the reappraisal, maybe changes that we didn't have before. So, And then um, that last packet that I gave you that starts with the auditor's website, this is basically just a screenshot walkthrough of the web application that we're hoping a majority of the public will use uh, to contact us. Um, it should take no more than five to ten minutes to complete um, if you're online and you know your parcel number. Your parcel number will be provided in the mailer that they receive, so all the information they need to go to the web application is provided in the mailer. Uh, but basically, we'll have a link right under the What's New section of the auditor's main page, bright blue. Link, click on the link and it will take you uh, to the second page to our web application uh, where uh, basically we just ask you to enter the parcel ID uh, to get started. We also have a copy of those frequently asked questions available if they click on this link below. Uh, for those that are curious, the same questions and answers that I provided you today are available to the public on this site uh, as well. So if you click on there, it will basically take you to a review of your property. It'll show the proposed property value as well as the basic information about your property, about the land that we have, uh, what type of land it is, about the building, uh, any buildings that are on there and any other improvements. On a, and at the end you can click on a link to submit an informal review. Uh, some people may be uh, happy after reviewing it say my property is accurate. Uh, they can still have us look at the valuation overall even if our, the property value the property characteristics look accurate. We can still review the valuation. And if they click on the bottom of the page, they will get on the next page a login. And the reason we're requiring a login is through uh, advice from our IT staff, basically to prevent any kind of misuse or abuse of our information system, that we don't just put information out there that somebody or some computer uh, could hit. Start spamming yeah, it could start spamming us. It's just to avoid spam. I'm sure many of you that if you've ever signed up for a newsletter or anything like that, you have to go through a certain login, set up an account. That's what this is for. Just absolutely basic information. And even if they don't use email, they can still log in. We don't require the email address. If they have a phone number, we just need some way to get in contact with them to notify them in December. And as Alan said, we're going to review this information in October and November, and we will contact them again in December to let them know the results. Get a list of, of where your public hearing is. Absolutely. Are. Okay. Yeah, yeah, Only because if somebody calls us, it I is. Be able to yeah, absolutely. Is that, is absolutely. that piece on the. Is that it's on their mailer. There's uh, three. The, oh, it's on the mailer. Yeah. Oh, no, they can give no, that's, a, you that's a sample. A sample so but right on the sample mailer, the three closest in proximity to them, yeah. based on where they're located, which city, village, or township they live in, the three closest to them are listed there. And then on the website, we will have the dates and times right. but of all of them. But, but if we somebody can print calls that me that does yeah. not I will send you, yeah. you I will send you a list. Yep, you know, we will give that to you. Absolutely. Yep. So good luck with that. Thank you. If anybody <laughs> likes to come out. So we have evenings and weekends. Uh, yeah. So we'll be, each Saturday, we'll be, I think we have Plain Jackson and Mass Line. Alliance. Canton. I'm trying to remember. Canton's on Saturday. On a Saturday. Well. Yes. Yeah, so. Jackson's on a Saturday. Yes. And I think Alliance is on a Saturday, too. So, uh, And then evening hours, I mean, almost every night we have one somewhere. Yes. So, uh, so again, we, we, want, we want the public, public. to come yes. in. We've right. tried to make this. These are all happening, in, uh, for the most part, in public libraries. Uh, so we appreciate very much the co cooperation of uh, the seven library districts. Yeah. Uh, in the in the county, they all more than willing to have to work with us on this. Uh, it's a safe, you know, it's a it's a place where people hopefully feel comfortable coming. Uh, easy, parking. easy parking, all ex everything's accessible, uh, you know, handicap accessible where we're doing these. Uh, so we're, we try to be very very mindful of that. So so call us, we're ready. Let us know how we did. Yeah.